Rockies is back at it this weekend. Uh, so lots to get into when it comes to that. Uh, and is Tomac fixed? Is Tomac back? I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Uh, expecting a, a, another wet, uh, wet dirt, soft dirt this weekend in Foxborough. It's always nice to be back there, by the way. It's really cool. Stadium, area, fans, all of that. The great JoJo Keller will uh, will be there as well. So I can't wait to meet up with JoJo and talk to him. Uh, taking your phone calls over there in the corner, holding things down. The Two Sledge Jerry. Hello, sir. How are you? Wonderful, thank you. Masters are starting, so this is important. Yes, is I'm only. If I normally give you like twenty percent of my attention, it's yeah. down to about three. Okay, for right. today, but nice it's to know. Still, it'll still get done though. And just to just to reiterate for the audience, it, it didn't listen to the Pulp Show that night. Uh, Hawaii next week. That's correct. Okay. All yes. Right, perfect. Yep. All right. Got it. Yep. Four days. Yep. Okay. Uh, t- uh, directing the show over there with the cameras. The Travis Marks. Hi, Marks. I'm living my life so wrong. Yeah, we we both are. I, every we both Thursday, are. it just I'm reminded, and it's quite depressing. It's it's unbelievable. But seeing your face makes me uh, makes me oh, happy. Oh, thank so. you. Appreciate it. Seven zero two five eight six seven eight five seven. Give us a call. Uh, Jason Thomas and uh, Zach Osborne will be on today on the show. And uh, thanks to the folks at Fly Racer, man. 25 years of Fly. Formula Helmet uh, is amazing. And go to the website, read about the Formula S Helmet as well. And uh, it's a helmet with a, with a brain. It's got an app. It can literally save your life, man, the Formula S Helmet. It's connected to your phone. And especially off-road guys, if you've got your phone in your pocket, you go down. Uh, it can really help. It can notify authorities. It can notify uh, significant um, people in your lives in case you don't move. Like, seriously, it's really, really cool. Fly Racing. Please check them out. Thanks to the folks at 100% Decal Works, Get, Maxis, Vertex Pistons, Plum Creek Funding, Seat Concepts, and Zools. Thanks to the folks at Decal Works, Pulp uh, 24 is, Pulp Max 24 is the code to save at decalworks.com. Red Bull KTM using their graphics. Uh, Kiefer as well uh, using their graphics. So they can design it for you. They can give you the proof. You can move your logos around. They can put sponsor logos on, all of that stuff on any bike. Any year, any size. They've done some retro stuff for me as well. Guys at Decal Works know what they're doing. And uh, Pulp24 is a code to save with those guys uh, there. I really appreciate that. Um, you know what? I need to check that code. you think I would know it by now. But I believe Pulp MX24. Sorry, Pulp MX24. Decal Works. Got it. Uh, thanks to those guys for coming on board. And uh, as well, Maxxis Tires. Great mountain bike tires. Like truck tires, trailer tires, all of that. Max is, is, is got it. you covered for when it comes to the world of tires. But PRMX and the Mad Parts Kawasaki team putting bikes in main events with the new Maxxis tires. Soft, intermediate, intermediate to hard terrain tires. Available now for the Maxxis guys. Uh, they've teamed up with that Jeremy McGrath guy. It's pretty good. And uh, so he's helped develop these tires over the years. And Max is an MC of a really close relationship. And these tires work really well. I did a podcast with Mitchell Harrison a couple weeks ago, a privateer pod. And I asked him about it, and uh, he gave uh, the Maxxis Tires a very good rating. So um, thanks to the folks at Maxxis Tires for coming on board the show. All right, let's get right into our first caller from Fly Racing. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? Not much. Just uh, I'm, watching it, I'm watching it rain, see there. I don't know if you've followed Monster Energy Supercross this season, but uh, rain seems to follow us everywhere we go. Yes. And t- today is no different. So I'm supposed to go to a Red Sox game tomorrow with my wife, and 95%. Ninety-five percent rain, so I don't think she's going to get to see Fenway. Yeah, I. Uh, so I got here last night evening, uh, and I almost went, and probably should have because there was a game today and a game tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I'll make one of them. Yeah. Nope. I don't. I don't think either of those are happening. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. So no matter what, the weather on Saturday, though, Mister Weatherman, is supposed to be okay. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Like, if if you only care about the race and not standing in the rain, it's fine. Um, which helps. Like, it's just going to be cold, and you know, is it going to? Is it raining hard? No. Is it probably going to affect the track? Probably not. Uh, it's just funny, man. Weather has been such a factor this year. You know, more than more than I can ever remember. And we've been around this sport for a really long time. Ninety-seven. A lot of rain too. I remember. Ninety-seven. Oh man, um, Dallas that year. Good God. Dallas. Dallas the Coliseum. Whoa. The Coliseum races had rain. Yep. Uh, that was was it? Okay, I, I was there in ninety-eight for Coliseum, yeah. but not ninety-seven. Yeah. Um. Lots to get into, though. So no matter what, JT, when I go around after the race for my uh, post-race podcasts, I'm mm-hmm. going to hear about riders telling me I was just trying to do the jumps, I was just doing doubles, I was just just wanted to survive. I don't know about oh, that. Okay. I okay. don't think it's. I don't think. Well, we'll see. T- today, not the case. Not enough rain. It's just gross. Uh, may- maybe we get heavier than this, but as of right now, it's just a nasty day. If you know what I mean, like yeah. it's just not yeah. very pleasant. No, but we're not doing any damage right now. 
Yeah, hopefully it's good. I like this race. I've always thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, like the, I like the crowd up there. A lot of Pulp fans. I meet a lot of fans. JoJo Keller's up there. Treadwell, KJ. I like this area. Yeah. I like this race. It's a very historically relevant part of the world for motocross. Yes. I like it better than New York. You know, like I just, I don't know. I like New York City, obviously, yeah. for different things, but yeah. Yeah, I, I love New York City, but as far as like the race goes, it doesn't feel very supercross oriented. It, it feels like we're going to a huge market, which is cool. Don't get me wrong, but this feels like there's a lot of local engagement. Like the whole NESC crew, it, it's just a, yeah. it's a different thing. No, it's I like it. Thing. Um, yep. We got to the East starting back up. Let's touch on that first. A uh, couple things. I think Hayden Deegan will be good. Um, whatever, you know, wrist slash lack of prep. He's had a few weeks, a few more weeks off. I think he comes out yep. swinging. But then, you know, I kind of look at like McAdoo, Red Plate, uh, really on a roll, and kind of like what we saw with Kitchen. When we left the West, Kitchen shared the Red Plate. I remember he had it by only a couple points. Came out swinging in the um, in the next race and took the last two wins convincingly and stretched his points lead. And I know that Pro Circuit found some stuff with their bike that helped mm -hmm. Levi. I would think they would, you know, maybe I don't. I don't know that it suits whatever they found. I don't know that it suits McAdoo. I don't know that he's found anything for McAdoo himself. It could maybe not have. But long-winded way I mean, of the saying bike's better. The bike's better. Yeah. You have to say it's better. Look yeah. at Forkner, look at McAdoo, look at Hamaker, look at Kitchen, look at everybody. Yeah. Like they're all they're all putting in their best performances they have maybe ever. You know what I mean? Like there's no way that there can't be a common denominator there. So I almost wonder, as much as I just talked about Hayden being I wonder if McAdoo takes this and grabs a hold of this thing. There's four rounds to go. So I'm of two minds. Uh I think McAdoo could be better than ever, um, with the confidence and the bike stuff, and then I feel like Hayden will be hundred percent. Yeah, I don't see. I don't think we'll see any real change from McAdoo. I just think we'll see the same guy he's been all season, which is opportunistic and hopefully just you know not losing his head, which he's done a, a great job of. Uh, but I do agree with you on the Deegan thing. Um, I, you know, I, I I felt like I was kind of out on a whim by myself with the wrist thing, saying like there's no way he should be considered his best self yet early on in the series. But I'm kind of past that now. Like I, I think there's been plenty of time multiple breaks uh that you know whatever we see now is his best self and and we started to see that at indy right he was he was the best we had seen him and then race three kind of blew any chance of the weekend for him uh and it, and it swung the points away from him so uh you know the the impetus is on him to kind of make things happen he's 18 points down he's got to get to winning and if he's back on his best form and can win You've got to look at these showdown races as as the biggest variable for him getting back into the points lead. Yeah, if we don't, so he's he's sixteen down. Wait, what? I think I just had. I thought it was eighteen. It, you could be right. I, I, I'm guessing. I thought it was eighteen, but I, I could be very wrong. Uh, no, sixteen down. Okay. Um, okay. four rounds to go. Yeah, without a shootout, I would say this would be really tough, right? Like without one. But you got we, two of them. We two got two. Them, yeah. yeah, we got two. So yeah, uh, I, I think that yeah, he's in the mix. Yeah, it helps. I mean, you look at the parity in both classes and how the results can vary, double that, right? So um, it doesn't mean it's going to have to go that way. But if you if you get a bad start or you have a crash, you're doubly punished, you know. Mm -hmm. Like instead of climbing, crawling back to a fifth, now you're crawling back to a ninth or a tenth. You know, it's, it's just much more punishing and much more rewarding for those that get it right and those that get it wrong. So I think it adds a, a great wrinkle to the series because – we get to this point in the championship where, you know, the, the, we don't have the depth that we do in the 450. So you get a lot of um, a lot of trend, and you're kind of like, well, I, I kind of know what's going to happen here before it happens. Like the top three or the top three, you know, maybe Pierce Brown puts in a strong performance or whatever. But we, we know who the protagonists are now. But those showdowns, anything can go, right? Like it just kind of completely changes the variables. None of these guys have raced against each other all year. Uh, so yes, as far as close championships go, I think they're they're a great addition. Tom V. Allen, Pierce Brown. Um, Pierce is third in the points. Uh, wait, is Pierce third or second? Hold on. Yeah, he's third. He's third. Yeah, he's Tom. He's Tom second. Tom second. Pierce is third. Yeah. I feel like we talk about Hammaker a little bit. Uh, we talk about McAdoo. We talk about Hayden. V. Allen Brown have been lost a little bit in this, and and this is from V. Allen, who's won two races. You know. 
Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just feel like we've, we're underestimating these two guys. We don't talk about them enough, myself included, because I'm thinking, can Hayden do it? Can he, is he too far back? McAdoo's reached a new level. And then there's the two uh, Austrian guys that were like, oh, yeah, we just move on. But maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, I, don't, I know on the broadcast side in our meetings, um, they have really been hammering the VL thing. Uh, I know that Will, Christian, and Ricky have both been very, very impressed with him, and I, and I think they're going to continue talking about him. Uh, I'm more in the camp of you are where I've kind of, I've kind of overlooked it. And, you know, I, I recorded my own podcast today, and I was kind of talking like I, I should be giving him more credit. Yeah. Um, mostly because of the, the level of improvement from year one to year two has been pretty notable. So, yeah, I'm going to try to do a better job of giving him credit. Um, I, I still don't think that he's like I, – I guess the only reason I push back is there are some that I've heard like, nope, he's got to figure it out now. He's a two-time champ. This is what champs do. Once they figure it out, it's off to the races. I'm not there. Like, I haven't seen, like, this dominant guy that's just going to run away with the series. Like, that, that's not what I've seen. I've seen a guy that's capable. He's really gotten better, and he's – figuring things out that's what i've seen and, and that's what i think should be credited credited with like he is absolutely capable of being in this title fight and winning races now yeah i just i'm just pushing back a little bit people are getting carried away with like nope now it's on everybody else's toast mm-hmm. like, i don't i don't see it that way yeah no i, I yeah I, I get it too 702-586 pulp 702-586-7857 we've got some lines open gonna give away a pair of 100 goggles and a fly racing goggle garage uh, to a couple of lucky callers. Thank you to the folks at 100%. Speaking of Jet Lawrence, speaking of uh, Hayden Deegan, 100% goggles. Uh, Pulp 30 is the code to save on everything, on goggles, on mountain bike stuff, on casual wear, on uh, protection stuff, all of that. 100%, uh, 100% website, go to Pulp 30 code, use that, and save with the folks at 100%. Thank you to those guys for coming on. And uh, as well, they're supporting the Pulp Mex Fantasy. Of course, as well, Zach Osborne coming up here as well as uh, uh, Jason Thomas on the line right now. Okay, um, I'll talk some more two fifties with Zacho, but also let's switch to four fifties. Uh, Tomac, is he fixed? Is he back? Is this it? Is this all we needed? <laughs> uh, you know what? I think my most burning question is: is like what the hell with the ankle? Like, is that a, was that a real thing? You know, like it's, I don't know. He told us he he, he told us <laughs> seventy thirty. He could put weight only weight on one side. Seventy to thirty yeah, is I, weight. Yeah. I know. Just like, why are you not telling anybody about this? Like, you're not because he said he didn't want to make excuses. I, I'm just yeah, but at least uh, like dude, give us I, an insight. It's like, yeah, don't you don't have. To, I don't know. My take on that is, you don't have to make an excuse. You can just say, hey, I'm dealing with something. I'm not 100. percent I'm going to give it hell though. You know, like yeah, dude, this is racing. And I told him on the phone. I said, you're Eli Tomac. No one will think you're making excuses. Yeah, he's never made excuses, <laughs> no, right? No. So, I, I think there is a there's a difference between you know the the two and placing blame on poor results on something or just saying, yeah, man, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fighting like hell. I'm struggling, but you know, this, this is racing and everybody has nagging injuries at this time of the year. So it is what it is. You know, I, I just to not have any insight because all we think in that moment is, well, he must've just lost it. Like he just doesn't have the edge anymore. Right. And I don't want to say that, but what else are we to look at when your results are nowhere near what we have seen you be capable of in years past? So that's what, that's what we defer to is like, well, he's lost the edge and, you know, he's probably just going to pack it in here, right? Other, you know, on the other side of that, well, you got this ankle thing that's really bugging you and you're probably not able to train right or position your, your foot on the peg right or do all these things, which we would love to know and be able to share and give some sort of shine a light on maybe why you've been struggling here and there. Mm-hmm. I, it's just, I know we've been railing on that point about riders not talking about injuries for i don't know 25 years uh but it's just it's so hard especially in my role now trying to share stories with the viewer and these things to not have any information is really yeah. really difficult no it's uh look i mean we we can't do mandatory stuff you know it, it apples to oranges when people talk about the nfl or whatever and even the nhl there's heavy gambling on the nhl and all nhl tells you is Upper or lower body, lower body, yeah, yeah, and they don't even they don't even specify starting goalies. So, you know, when you're screaming and yelling about making these things mandatory in our sport, it is not going to happen. Uh, no, no, soon. I don't, I don't think it is. No, I I'm just saying people. I'm saying people. Um, oh right, yeah. Uh, uh, but but yeah, I like. I'm with you, man. Like you could drop it to Coker, or John can drop it to me, or somebody else. 
very easily, and you know, there's no excuses made, and we just sort of know. You know, I mean, yep. uh, every racer is dealing with something or another, and and they tell us. So it would have been nice. So, I uh, yeah, just if yeah. you don't want to get into specifics, all I have to do is just you know because he's getting he's doing tons of interviews, right? Like everybody to a man is asking like, "Hey, man, what what's yeah. up?" Like Birmingham was was rough. You just haven't looked great. All you have to do is say, "Yeah, we're dealing with some stuff. Like yeah. everything, I'm not quite right." Yeah. You know, like even if you want to be that vague, don't just leave us to think that you're not as good as you used to be. That's that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Well, speaking about as good as he used to be, like, look, uh, Jet is on a two-race winless streak, um, and he lost a bunch of points last race, obviously with that Red Cross fiasco and all of that. But I mean, you could, you know, you could make an easy case that he's gone two-one, the last Triple Crown in St. Louis, and he was on the line, ready to go, you know, to win it again before uh, the bad start. Uh, the so-so start, I should say. And then, you know, we all saw it happen in Seattle. It took all of that, and he still got a third. My confidence isn't my. There's a long way of saying my confidence has not wavered on Jet Lawrence, JT. Fastest guy still, probably will win this weekend. The best guy is still the best guy. Yeah. Um, the the question is is can he smooth out these rough edges? You know, not all of them have been his fault, but he's dangerously allowed Cooper Webb back into this thing, and Coop's got confidence and momentum and. It's just not the right guy. It's not the guy you want hanging around waiting a championship. It's just not. You know, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Mm-hmm. So, for my money, I would still pick Jeff to win the title. I, I don't think you can really make an argument for, for him not being the championship favorite. The best rider with the points lead is, is a hard argument to make a case against. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they, they drop the gate every Saturday night, and you've got to perform, and you can't have, you can't have these mishaps. They, they are – far too costly and and we look back on that seattle one and you're like eh, whatever man he was so damn good Mm -hmm. he still got third it doesn't matter but you think about the swing there between he loses uh five points versus gaining three right so it's even with the the drama in st louis it's another eight points you would basically double his gap had he not crashed in seattle so these little things you look back you wonder how's this championship tight man it feels like jet has been just killing everybody it, it's those point swings like that that will kill you in the end. Uh, Phil was in the studio a couple weeks ago and obviously super tight with Coop, right? And even Phil on the show, he's like, Coop would tell you right now he's not as fast as Jet, but it doesn't matter. He's hanging around. Yeah, sure. <laughs> absolutely. You know, yeah, he- I, I, uh, I've made, I missed our broadcast call yesterday, but I made a note sheet. Uh, long story short, this is the point I was trying to make is, if you compare it to other sports, right? Like we, we both watch football a lot. I'm sure hockey has the same kind of dynamic, but anybody that goes into a fight, a game, anything, and you're like, okay, I'm not as good as this person. I'm being, I'm going to be real. Like I'm not, we're not as talented. I can't run as fast. I can't fight as well, whatever, whatever the case is, I need to find another way to beat this guy. Right. And oftentimes what you want to do is just extend the game as long as possible. Like get into the fourth quarter or get into the third period with a chance to win, right? Don't let it be – don't be down by 30, right? Find a way to be down by a score, maybe down by 10, down by a goal, whatever, and then anything can happen. And that's how I view this for Cooper Webb is he's looking at it just like Phil said. I can't go as fast as this damn guy can. Like, he's he's legit. Everybody knows it. But if I can be incredibly opportunistic, when Jet is still going through this learning process, which he is, and get it down to the final few races, I give myself a chance, and then anything can happen. Maybe he cracks under the pressure. Maybe maybe Justin Barsha blasts him to the moon. You don't know. But if you give yourself a chance, and Cooper Webb's the only one who has still given him a chance, in my opinion, to win this championship, get into the fourth quarter, get down to the last couple of possessions, and then you have a chance. And that, that's how I see it. And he's done a great job of, of kind of keeping that in the realm of possibility. Uh, Jason Thomas, Fly Racing. Please check out 25 years of Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Get it at motorsport.com or your local dealer. Lots going on with Fly Racing. Um, Please check it out. Thank you to those guys. Uh, All right, let's get some phone calls here. Uh, We have uh, the lines are still – we've still got a few lines open, 702-586-PULP. We have Reed on one. What's up, Reed? How's it going? Good. What's your question? First nice call. Thank you. First time call. Um, So seeing what – Prado and uh, DeWolf are doing in Europe right now. Do um, you think, because given that both of them want to come to America um, next year, do we think um, we might be seeing, like, I guess the next um, future battles between 
DeWolf and uh, Kitchen, given they're in, you know, having a similar yeah. trajectory in their career. And same deal with Prado and Jen. Yeah, I don't think DeWolf was ready to come here. And, you know, he's Dutch, so you know his Supercross skills probably weren't great. And then he yeah. wasn't good enough in motocross to come here, in my opinion. But he's a new guy this year. Looks awesome. Yeah. And we know Prado is coming, JT. Yeah, yeah, I think Prado – and I think I think DeWolf's going to come too from the, the scuttlebutt I heard in Europe last week. Uh, I, I think that's a very real and possible or probable outcome is him coming to America in 25 or 26. Uh, the Kunin twins will be here too. Um, so you think the, you're going to see an so influx of talent team? coming from Europe very soon. Go ahead, Reed. Do you think uh, DeWolf will go to one of the Austrian teams if he comes? Same thing with the Kunin brothers? Uh, I mean, you'd have to think so. Like, why would they let him go would be my answer yeah. to that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when you look at, like, the Coonan brothers, they have, you know, their agent is Lucas Myrtle. I'm sure he's talking to everybody that has budget available, yeah. right? Like, why, you know, like, but uh, if you're also, if you're a pit buyer and you're looking at it, you're like, uh, yeah, those are my guys. We cultivated that talent from the EMX class. They're not going anywhere. And yeah. it seems yeah. like Rockstar Husky's going to have some spots, 250-wise. Yeah. yeah, they have to be just – drooling over the possibility of bringing those guys over yeah uh, how could they not be yeah i think so do you think though like i mentioned the wolf supercross skills like i don't know how they are but i would imagine I mean, I don't think he has any right i don't think he has any. okay like, exactly he's, <laughs> he's really young and he's never ridden supercross so i don't think there there are any yeah i just i assume a guy from holland doesn't have supercross skills no no and he yeah. didn't rate you know like some of these kids go and race german championship french championship mm -hmm. I, he's never done any of that yeah so i i would i would be shocked if he spent more than one day ever on a supercross track that would yeah. that would be very surprising to me um hey uh reed do you want a pair of 100 percent goggles or a fly racing goggle garage i'd love some 100 percent goggles all right man stay on hold you got them all right thanks for calling thank you guys have a good one thank you appreciate it stay on hold we'll get you those uh goggles thanks to the folks at zool's bags z-u-l-z bag code.com Pulp 24 is a code to save official bag of the Triumph Racing Guys. They've got you covered with backpacks, travel roller bags, gear bags, and more. Uh, please check them out. They've had the biggest gear bag I've ever seen in my life. High quality and real world use functionality are just a couple of reasons why Zools is not only the official goggle of Triumph or got official luggage of Triumph, but also for performance, collegiate professional teams, uh, Pastrana, and more. Use Zools. So thanks to the folks at Zools. Use that code and save. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, JT, it will be interesting to see. Like, I would assume Sasha, the other Kunin brother, is part of the deal, not staying in Europe, coming here? Yeah, I mean, they're really, they're really young. Yeah. So uh, I, I think the whole family's coming. Yeah, go. right. So you, now you need two rides, though, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think Sasha, Sasha has more developing to do physically. Like, mm -hmm. he's a really diminutive guy, and you see him having issues with the pace. But, I mean, he hole shots every damn time, and his sprint speed is incredibly good. So... It's the work we can work with speed thing mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see any problem with them bringing him over. Like, he has the ability to make it. I think he's just a little bit behind Lucas as far as his development process. All right. Before we let you go, JT, the guys at Bet Online, uh, we did our Pulp Fantasy pod yesterday. The odds are up. Uh, we've teamed up with oh, these yeah. guys through Pulp Fantasy. Unfortunately, Jet Lawrence did not does not have a two in front of his name. The number. What two. did it land at? I, I didn't get a chance to look. Minus one ten. Minus one ten. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah that's that's surprising. He, to I thought some, so too. Uh, right. He hasn't won for two they races. Must be a little nervous. Yeah. yeah. They must be a little nervous about jet money. Yeah. So uh, Sexton's plus three fifty. Tomac plus four fifty. I, yep. I don't know why Tomac yep. would be worse odds than Chase Sexton, but he is. Uh, I mean, yeah, Sexton's ahead in points. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I think it's it's very much data driven. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think there's someone looking at it going, you know what? This guy rides a little better than him in these conditions. Like I don't think any of that matters. I think it's they're put they're putting data into a, a you know formula and spinning something out. Mm -hmm. Hayden Deegan plus two hundred. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it opened really high. Yeah. Um, so people have been hammering the Deegan line for for good reason. Um, I you know I think if you got great odds on Deegan, congrats to you. It doesn't mean you're going to win anything, mm -hmm. but uh, I like taking a swing there. I don't. I, yeah, I don't mind that either for plus two hundred for. For Hayden to come. Well, it opened at plus sixteen hundred. So what? No, it the, didn't. The, the, yeah, it absolutely did. It absolutely did. Uh, so people that got that number, congrats to you. I'm not really sure why it opened there, but that's so. This conversation we had on uh, what was it Monday night, where yeah. I was talking about how 
smart money can kind of go in early sometimes, or sometimes they wait till late. Mm-hmm. That was a prime opportunity where smart money was hammering right when the line came out and they didn't realize where maybe they, you know, they didn't see the edge there. So mm-hmm. that's what, you know, that's, that's the strategy of some of this stuff. Like once you get close to betting time, like usually enough money's come in where they figured out where maybe they made a mistake setting the line early or whatever. So your value is not much is there, but man, Plus sixteen hundred. You're getting sixteen to one on your money if you uh, if you bet on Hayden D. And that's is that what you guys were talking about on a group text this morning? Maybe I, we were. Okay, because I was on a bicycle ride. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. So, um, yep. geez, <laughs> sixteen. It's wild, right? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Seven zero two five eight six. Give us a call uh, on uh, on the line. Fly race and Moto sixty show. Zach Osborne coming up next. Um, all right, JT. Uh, here's where I uh, ask you to pick your winners this weekend. Uh, 250. I'm going to go with Deegan. I think it's time. I think he's due. Um, yeah, I, I think he's finally back to full strength and healed and ready to, to do it. Uh, so I'll go with Deegan, but I don't, I don't really have any conviction. And I think there's three guys that can win and one of them will, uh, but I'll, I'll pick Deegan. Yep. Uh, and then 450. I'm, I just, I continue to pick Jet. Like I don't, you know, I haven't been right for two weeks, but I, I genuinely think, He's the best Supercross rider and arguably the best motocross rider alive. Mm-hmm. So why would I not pick that guy? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, you can't. You know, you, you you're, you're probably going to be right with one of those. So yeah, and and it's racing, right? If if we knew what yeah. the outcome was going to be before it started, we wouldn't watch. So right. that's, I mean, if you told me that he was riding the way he was at the last two races and didn't win, I would say you're you're crazy. But that's what racing is. Yeah. Absolutely. Fly Race and Moto 60 Show. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Enjoy uh, enjoy Boston. We'll see you there. All right, guys. See you. Right, see you. That's Jason Thomas, everybody. Seat Concepts. Pulp MX24 is a code to save, whether you're hitting the motocross track or gearing up for a trek across the country. Seat Concepts has a seat for you. See all the options at seatconcepts.com. And uh, each seat has a proprietary uh, formula and has various height and width profiles as well. And these guys also do um, on and off-road seats as well. So not just motocross. They do a lot of uh, on-road stuff and uh, dual sports stuff and adventure bikes and all of that. And so please check out seatconcepts.com. Pulpamex24 is the code to save with them. And Vertex Pistons, of course. Premier choice for that to market pistons, gaskets, and complete engine rebuild kits for ATVs, UTVs, and more. Check out allballsracinggroup.com, Vertex Pistons, precision equals performance. Manufactured in Italy, Vertex Pistons are both cast and forged, while the gaskets are proudly made in the USA. Thank you to the folks at Vertex Pistons. Uh, also, Decal Works, 100%, Get Data, Maxis, Seat Concept, Zools, Plum Creek Funding, all on board with us, 702-586-7857. Give us a call. Uh, all right, right into our next guest. He's a Supercross champ. He's a motocross champ, Zach Osborne. What's up, Zacho? Uh, cruising along, Steve. What about you? I'm good, man. Thank you. Um, hey, uh, it's been a couple weeks and we're moving on in our lives, but I need to get your take, your thoughts on the Barsha jet thing. Um, I was hoping you weren't going to ask about that. No, I have to, because people care about what you think. Cause you raced. Um, I kind of <laughs> think it was both of their uh, faults, but yeah, what are you, where are you at? So I'm in two places with it. Jet definitely cut down early. Um, but it's like mostly probably like 80, 85% on Barsha in my opinion, because yeah. again, like with the hitting people in the, I mean, he hit him in the, in the front wheel of, effectively, but, uh, you know, hitting him in the butt basically, uh, like we said, with the start incidents we've seen and all that, like you gotta be aware of what's happening in front of you too, you know? Um, and also being that it was Vince behind him and just the history that they both have, I would have liked to have seen what he did to Vince in the corner before that he was so, so hard <laughs> protecting the inside, uh, yeah. you know, going to the turn where he hit jet. Cause I, I think there's something there. Um, I guess we'll probably never know, but yeah, I think, um, in my mind, it's like 80, 20 or 85, 15 on Barsha. Yeah. I think I'm with you on that. And it, dude. Vince is the one whose bike broke between the finish lines. Vince is the one that Barsha was trying to cut away, get away from. <laughs> it's just, it's phenomenal. It's fucking phenomenal. It is. It, it really it is. is. But um, I'll tell you why. It was a shot. He hit him freaking hard, man. Like, yeah. That's lucky. I mean, I don't know that he's completely okay or whatever, but he's yeah. lucky to be good. You know, if if it were, if his leg would have been down or in the wrong spot, it could have been a season changer for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Um. 
All right, Zacho, I'm going to start with this because you keep talking about this guy and you keep pumping him up and it ain't happening. The 21, Jason Anderson, like what? what is happening? What's going on? Wait, wait, wait. First, let's start with Tomac because I, I was on the bandwagon on the last show. Like, he's still going to get a win. Yeah, you were. Can we talk about Tomac not telling us about an ankle injury that he told us on the Pulp Show? Uh, was a 70-30 imbalance. He couldn't put all of his weight on it. Can we talk about him not saying a goddamn word to anybody? Uh, that's pretty surprising. I didn't know that it was that severe. Like, I that's saw some stuff that yeah. he had mentioned it, but um, definitely a huge holdup, I would say, um, especially with the injury he had last year. Um, yeah, that's not ideal. Yeah, uh, and it but was I, the other I, ankle. Yeah, so, it, was, it was the other ankle from his Achilles. So that's, yeah, that makes it maybe, I don't know, maybe worse. Maybe because worse, right, yeah. Then your then your seventies on your sort of weak side, if you will. Yep. So, just never mentioned it. Then he finally took last week off. The week of sorry, the week before St. Louis, he took off. Did a little starts, he said, and a little sprint, but basically took it off. And then he comes out and wins. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think it just goes to show that like every all riders are, you know, they they need to take more time away. In my mm-hmm. opinion, like everybody's so on the program and into the training and everything, which I get, like I, I was one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I think that when the, when the guys at the top are on mentally, that's the main thing. Okay. 21. Is it just being uh, around Phil not, every day? Not on mentally. <laughs> yeah. Is it just being around Phil every day? That's dragging him down. I, I don't know, man. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't look poppy to me. He doesn't look um, fiery. He doesn't. He just doesn't have that. Um, I don't know that allure to watch that he had in the beginning of the season. Um, like especially, at, I know I've brought it up a couple times. It's kind of the the thing I've hung my hat on with him this season. But dude, at A two, dude was next level. Like mm-hmm. he was the best guy there a lot. Like by far, you know. Um, but he just hasn't looked the same since then. I don't know if he got sick or what, but mm-hmm. um, he just hasn't come come back around. And, um, man, he needs a result quick, I think. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, there's been no indication he's going to get one, right? I mean, he's – No, I, he's, I'm, he, with, yeah. you. I'm yeah. with you. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see – you know, maybe the weekend off did him so good. Maybe he took some time and mm-hmm. changed it up a little bit with outdoors or – Took some time off or whatever, but man, I, he's it, it needs to happen quick because uh, I feel like he's he's one of those guys you got to keep him interested um, and results <laughs> are the thing to do that, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's been r- a rough couple six, four, five, six races for him, mm-hmm. and it's got to turn around pretty quick. Yeah. So, do you think going back to Tomac? Knowing what we know about the ankle and seeing how he did in St. Louis, like, is he just back? Like, I'm not saying championship. I think he's too far back. He's got to pass too many great riders. But can he just win some more races? I think he can win more. I mean, what do you think? I kind of – well, if I didn't know the ankle, I would have said that St. Louis was just a combo of a triple crown slash – you know, because let's not forget, he was he, he was down – he wasn't down. He was tied with Jet going into the third one. You know, so it wasn't right. like he yeah, was – Yeah, I don't – I'm not – he definitely – you never get lucky at that level. No. But definitely there was – Fortunate. But, but Jet put himself in that position to get hit. Like, you know, he was not like second or third on the start. He was like back there. What, where was he, like eighth or ninth? Yeah, something like that. Yep. So, like, he put himself in that position. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know that he could have caught Eli outright from there with Eli leading, you know? Yeah, I don't know either. No, I don't know. I mean, so, he, did, he did catch him in the first one, but he didn't get by him. There's a difference, right? Um, oh yeah, there's yeah. a difference passing a guy as seasoned and and mm-hmm. smart as as Eli. Like that's not going to be an easy task. But are there? There's no more triple crowns, right? They're done. They're done. Yep. Cooper Webb won the uh, triple crown championship. Who knew? But, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, I totally forgot that. Um, I think he can win another race. I don't. I don't know about multiple yeah. more races, but I think he can win another race. Uh, also, the news happened while we were on the week off. Uh, Adam Cincirillo announced that he will be hanging the boots up after Salt Lake City. Uh, really, the injury started for him, as he said, you know, kind of going into his rookie year of 450s and kind of just got worse with nerve numbness uh, in his shoulder, in his shoulders that laid down to his hands and arms. Um, some thoughts on AC hanging it up, Zacho? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I commend them for probably choosing the smart road, the mm-hmm. uh, smart long term road. But it's it's a bummer to see him um, go out with you know without a win in the 450 class and um, without just a lot of the accolades that we probably all thought that he could get. You know, I think he's one of the one of the more talented guys ever. Definitely the most successful amateur ever in my opinion um and it's just a a tough tough look back you know Mm -hmm. i think there was uh, he was destined for a lot but a lot of things happened and that's just it's kind of racing you know um i think he's a great dude i think he'll find a lot of success post racing maybe maybe more so than than racing honestly um but yeah just a good solid dude i always enjoyed racing adam uh Always enjoyed talking to him on the starting line, even though he hated it. Yeah, he didn't like when he uh, threw up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like when I threw up on him that one time at Washougal. Yeah. Um, but I did I did enjoy uh, racing at him a lot. You know, he was one of the guys that I always felt like, no matter what, he was just going to go out there and put it on the line, and whatever happened, happened. And I, I commend him for that, and I, like I said, really enjoyed it. Do you – so you hung it up not that long ago, and – if I'm being honest, Zacho, it seems like you're still searching. Uh, you did GNCC, didn't go well. You're helping Joey out. Uh, you're maybe thinking about coming back to racing this summer, although that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, you're trying to stay busy. You're trying to find, I think, some adrenaline, some purpose, some mission in your life. Uh, do you have any advice for Adam? Yeah, for me, it's not really a purpose or, or even adrenaline. It's just the fact that like my retirement was such a – strange scenario uh on my side behind closed doors Mm -hmm. that um it left a lot to be desired so but i think i'm at a point in my life now after this last injury at a you know at a freaking fun race that it's time to just kind of move on um okay um, as far as purpose goes my my family and stuff is kind of my purpose uh always has been but racing is something i still enjoy i still enjoy riding so that was the tough bit for me, and I'm sure Adam may go through some of that just because it's not on his terms. You know, it's an it's mm-hmm. an injury that he can't shake or can't get rid of, or however you want to say it. Um, and it's I'm sure that it feels premature. You know, he's otherwise healthy and happy and on a factory team and all that stuff. So it's that makes it more tough. I think you know, like the the racer never really dies. I don't think, mm-hmm. um, but that scenario makes it a little bit tougher. I mean, I don't really have any, uh, any advice cause I haven't really, um, sorted it out completely. <laughs> myself. You, so, you don't really have the answers either right now. Right. Some don'ts at this. <laughs> um, will, will we see you, uh, with Joey this summer a little bit? Do you think? Yeah, I, yeah. that's the plan. Um, okay. he asked me to come to some races. So, um, I think I'll be there. This races and um yeah we have like four or five guys on our program now so okay it's growing rapidly um it was never really my intention to do training but it just kind of has me and it's something that i enjoy and uh, i feel like it can be useful you know in some places for for guys and um, yeah it gives me uh something to do and um, a reason to continue with my cycling because I don't ever want those guys to beat me, so <laughs> just keep, keep training. 702-586-7857. Plum Creek Funding. If you're looking to purchase a home in 2024, your first-time buyer, your investor, you got a vacation home like Tits Legendary, Plum Creek Funding has programs that suit your needs. If you already own a home, you're looking to pull some cash out of that thing. Uh, rates are looking better than they have been. Uh, contact Zach, Z-A-C-H, at PlumCreekFunding.com. For more information, Zach at PlumCreekFunding.com. And uh, we thank the folk guys at Plum Creek Funding. They've done a lot of uh, mortgages and things like that for people in the industry. So Zach's a good dude. Help him out. Z-A-C-H at PlumCreekFunding.com. We do have Riley on one. Riley, what uh, what's going on? Thanks for listening to Fly Race and Moto 60 Show. What's your question for Zach? Oh, I was just calling to see if uh, – well, thanks for having me on first off. But yeah. uh, I was calling to see if Zach had listened to the Pulp Show where after Eli's Triple Crown win um, – and then the tweet debacle getting brought up, if he had any any words on that. And then also if uh, he was ever racing Eli when he knew he was injured and when he finally got healed, what type of uh, comeback would he be expecting from him 
here on out now that he's feeling better. We got we finally got to ask Eli about that tweet, Zacho. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't listen to the show. I I never really listened to the show that much. I listened to I think the last one I listened to was five hundred, which was awesome. Um, but I didn't I didn't even hear what he said to be honest. Uh, you know, as far as yeah, on the just, show goes, he just yeah, he just said that he was in his tractor one day and he was lurking, saw that tweet, thought it was wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. I, I don't, you know, a lot of people, like, kind of take jabs at me still. Like, I get it in my mentions all the time. But, like, it's it's neither here nor there. Like, I, I still feel like what I said, the way that I personally raced against him was the more that I could roost him, the better. But, like, I, it's, it was my personal experience. Nobody's experiencing my reality like I am, right? So, yeah. um, I it was it was never in any sort of way – uh, a disrespect. I think Eli is one of. I could argue that he's maybe the greatest of all time in, in America. Um, not so much on um, sheer wins like Ricky had and stuff, but like the span of his career, um, doing it on different manufacturers, all the things that he's mm-hmm. done. Like I, I don't like. I have zero disrespect in my yeah. um, mind or heart for Eli. I've spent some time with him in Colorado really kind of changed my path as far as my riding and stuff goes and i appreciate all that so uh it was never in disrespect it's i had said it like multiple times before on the pulp show so i don't know why everybody was so caught off guard with it on twitter you know like um but i guess it was just mainly because eli was out of the cage after a three-year hiatus or whatever it yeah was. it was more like that like he didn't you know he didn't say anything until all of a sudden just come out of the blue like that yeah right yeah, and, and it was, you know, like like I said, it's been kind of out of context, taken out of context or whatever. But yep. um, yeah, I don't, I don't like I said, I don't have any disrespect or, or ill will or didn't mean any um, slight to him in any way. Like I mm. have learned a lot from watching him, being his teammate. You know, been around him a lot in my career, so that was never the intent. Uh, and Riley, what was your other question about racing, Tomac? Oh, uh, basically just that. Um if he had ever raced Eli with an injury in the past and when, uh, when he finally got over that injury, if, if he's expecting like a, basically like a second wind coming from now that he's healed up with his ankle injury. Yeah. I think there's a second wind. I don't, like I said a little bit earlier, I don't think he, I don't know if he has just multiple wins clicking off here in the next couple races, uh, in on him or written on him or, you know, in him or whatever. Um, but I think definitely he can win win again uh, before the end of the season. Maybe he wins more than once. I don't know. Um, I think the Triple Crown really suits him. He's a confidence guy, and I think you know that's going to be a big boost for him. Um, when when you don't win for a while and you're the guy who's supposed to be winning, it tends to start to build a little bit of pressure, and I think getting that monkey off his back is good. I definitely think he'll be probably the second best second favorite guy in my opinion uh to win races from this point on in the mm-hmm. season um obviously jet is is pretty next level when he wants to be but um i think with eli you know getting three hole shots at the last race and being able to put himself in a good position it, it's doable like you know jets he's not unbeatable he's just really good <laughs> sounds good riley you want to fly racing goggle garage I would love one. All right, stay on hold, all right? You get it. You do. They're, they're yeah, sick. Thanks. Yeah, they're sick. See, endorsed by Zach Osborne. Um, we don't have many calls today. I don't know I don't know if Tits Legendary is, like, blocking the phones because it doesn't want to work. Probably. Probably. Um, hey, Zacho, 250 East, they're back. Uh, when we last saw uh, this McAdoo, Red Plate, Deegan 16 back, Vial, Pierce Brown, underrated seasons, Vial's two wins. Um, what's your take on this? On this TVD East, is this is this Cam's thing to to lose? I don't I don't know if it's his to lose just because of his track record, but mm-hmm. I mean this year he's kind of broken that you know he's kind of changed his stripes a little bit. So I would say he's the favorite. I don't know if it's his to lose, but I think he's he's kind of in the captain seat at the moment. Yeah, um, I agree. We're gonna have some I, I, we're gonna have some shootouts. You only did one of these, right? Is there right? one or two? Two. Is there one? There's two, two left: Nashville and Salt Lake City. Does, Salt Lake's an actual points paying shootout. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's that's tough. <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, but I, well, what I'm asking for is 
do do the shootouts, and I think they do, but I'm going to ask you. I kind of think like RJ and Cam and a little of the older experienced riders, something like what you were, the shootouts favor them a little bit because like you could really – huge swings, right, rider, good or bad. And sometimes I think if you're a kid, you get caught up in the want to prove a point thing and that could go sideways. Uh, do you think the shootouts favor veterans? Um, I do probably – I would probably agree with that. But the problem with the shootout is is it's one bad start away from, like you said, a big swing, and those, that can be in your direction or not. You know, um, Joey and I were talking about the one the other day from Indy 2018, and I think I got eighth or seventh or eighth, and he got, like, 11th or something. Like, And we were – you know, I was leading east, and he was in the hunt in the west, and mm-hmm. that's just how quickly it can go sideways. You know, I, I got a bad start down. Uh, I got a tough block caught on me in the first corner and was last and got eight. Like, it was not a great race. And, um, you know, that was an indie shootout, which is kind of, you know, it was super soft, super ruddy. Um, I think the track conditions, as long as it's not a mutter, obviously, in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, will more – be, be better racing for a shootout be you know you'll be able to move around more but i mean the main thing is is it's 10 the best 10 guys from east coast uh, from each coast for the most part um and i think that you know it, it just tightens things up a little bit it's kind of the way i feel like it would be if we had a national series uh instead of just a, a regional series i think it would be tighter racing um mm-hmm. you'd see a little bit more parity than two or three guys on each each coast um so to me it it does favor those guys if they can get a good start and get a third Mm -hmm. but i mean it's really easy to get an eighth like i said so i i didn't with without the showdowns coming up i keep calling them shootouts but showdowns shootouts whatever um without those coming up I mean, I think Hayden's kind of out of this, being 16 down and got to jump three riders. But show, add the showdowns in, and he's still in this thing, right? Yeah, I don't think that he's done by any means. Um, you know, like I said, McAdoo has had some mistakes in his past. Um, I do think he's in a much better spot this year with that. I think he's in the driver's seat, but um, two showdowns would make me a little nervous. Um, yeah, for sure. It, it, you know, just, I mean, no matter who it is, I think that, it makes you a little nervous. If I think Kitchen would be a little nervous about two showdowns because yeah. just the same for him. You know, he can get a get a bad start and get an eight, and then his points leads down to nothing. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Robert's on one. Uh, Robert, thanks for calling the Fly Race and Moto Sixty Show. What's your What's your question for Zacho? Well, I really have a couple comments based on Zach's comments and uh, Adam's comments, and and then you know. You know, a lot of guys come towards the end of their career and really have no idea what they want to do. And unfortunately, and I've had this conversation with RJ and a bunch of other guys, a lot of guys go sideways, you know. And so, you know, advice to to all these guys, you know, when they're struggling with their career is um, flying home from tearing my ACL at Southwick. My dad told me, put as much effort into anything else you want to do as you have into racing and you'll be successful. And Man, I look back at those words, and you know, I managed to go to college and get into healthcare, and then have a works and uh, mountain bike career and a truck racing career, and never quite made it to the level of you know the guys that are on your shows. But I, I look back to that comment from my dad, and I think God, racing, especially moto, was the hardest thing I've ever done, and everything I've accomplished post racing is because. I looked at it the same as all these guys that I looked at racing. There's a start line and there's a finish line. You just put your head down and, and keep grinding. And if you don't find something to do that keeps that adrenaline and that brain busy, you know, like I said, unfortunately, a lot of guys can go into depression and, and you know, have all kinds of other issues. Hell, I've been there, and I know a lot of other racers have been there. So, yeah, anyway, that's really just No, you're comment. right. You're, you're right. right. Um, to, I, you know what? I, loved, I, I did a podcast a couple years ago with – Talon Volan, Brock Glover, and I can't remember the third person. Maybe it was just Brock and Talon. And I admired those guys because they were greats, right? Like Talon won races in Europe and America. Glover's got six championships. And they were as successful yep. off the bike as they were on the bike, and I wanted to find out why. And the number one thing they told me was the hard work. Like Talon said, I didn't even know how to turn a computer on, you know, when I quit. Yep. Like I, I had to learn Excel and Word and, you know what I mean? Like – 
uh, I just admired that Talon was like, yeah, super hard work is how I made it happen. Um, so you're right, Robert. Uh, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one. And good luck to all these guys that are retiring and trying to find their way. Just put your head down like you yeah. did at the start line and keep driving to the finish line and life will be good. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. So. Thanks, Robert. Uh, yeah. Well said, right, Zach? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and I think that that's, I think that that's kind of ingrained in you from a young age, you know, like from, from eight or 10 years old, you're, you're working at a goal and, um, like motocross has been a part of my life for dang 30 years now, 28 years now, you know, I'm only 34, but it's been a long time. Um, so yeah, I totally, I totally get what he's saying. And I, I agree with him a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, uh, I admire those guys that, cause a lot of the racers, especially like Talon and Glover, like, when they raced, they were great. Everybody handed them everything, and everybody told them how awesome they were, and they got paid a lot of money. Um, you know, never, you know, so like a privateer guy succeeding is at least grinding away in his racing career. Those guys took, you know, that 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 work ethic from being champion and turned it into something. You know, so yeah, corporate work ethic and on the same level, basically. Um, and Glover, like, I mean, you know, he, he didn't make as much money as these guys make now. Uh, but dude, he grinds, man. He's at, he's everywhere. The guy's on an airplane yeah. every weekend, you know? So, yeah. um, all right, Zacho. Hey, uh, JT and I were talking earlier, um, last point here on the fly moto 60 show, JT and I were talking earlier, like it's eight points to coop and you know, that's the last guy you kind of want to let hang around. Like Phil said, coop would probably admit that jet's been faster than him all year long. You know, doesn't he, matter. Doesn't matter though, right? You're, he's eight down. That's the last guy you want to let be eight down. Yeah, I think it breathes a little bit of life back into him, which is what has happened a few times with Coop. And um, it's he's not the guy you want to you want to breathe life back into. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely. Like he's just yeah, he's hanging around, man. Um, which is the is the wrong thing to do. Like late in the race, and and Coop's gonna be there. So um, I still I'm very confident jets got this even though he lost his half his lead zach right yeah yeah a little bit like mcadoo like he's in the driver's seat but i i'm not sure that it's his yet you know yeah 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 so okay foxborough this weekend zach osborne who wins it who wins both classes um do we know like an actual weather forecast i didn't look before uh, we got on accident. it's gonna rain tomorrow but it should be good for race day but still, it's really, really techy there. Really yeah. soft. That dirt is super weird. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go um, um, danger and jet. That's not. That's the same as JT's picks. Oh, is it? Yeah, but uh, hey, that's it. That's listen, it. So yeah, um, right. it's not. It's not bad. Uh, it's it's actually pretty decent. Uh, thanks, Zacho. Appreciate it. Um, where are you coming? Any races anymore? Uh, I'm not. I don't have any supercrosses on the list, but okay. I'll get some outdoors for sure. Okay, with 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 Joe Dog. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, Zacho. And also, by the way, we should announce to the listeners that you and I have struck a deal to we have to appear on the outdoors uh, Moto sixty shows. Yep, I'm here for it. It was tough negotiations. It was, uh, and I already paid you, so you can't back out of don't, it. Don't, don't, because people think I'm greedy or something. Well, of course I'm paying you. What do you think people are? Do, do, do people? Do you think no, people? No, it wasn't tough negotiations. Oh. It was like, hey, do you want to do this? And I was like, yes. Yeah, I know. That's true. You're right. It was. Uh, Don't spice it. I, <laughs> it's our media. That's what we do. We stir it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're just fake news. Right. Thank you for coming on uh, for Supercost, and we're going to keep doing these, obviously. And then, yeah, outdoors, it's it's been a lot. You offer a lot to the show, and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, we will talk next week. Zacho, thanks, buddy. Everything's good as long as Tits calls me. That other guy doesn't call my number, please. Okay, will do. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. What does he mean by that? What? 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 He doesn't uh, want to talk to Travis. It's going to get awkward next week when I'm not here. Yeah. No, I, or did he mean I, talent? I don't. Know. I don't. Maybe he didn't like my comment about uh, my Eli comment. It, my on, on Twitter the other when day. I was texting him before the the show to let him know what time he says as long as you're the one calling and not Travis. Everything oh, will be wow. fine. Okay. So you've I, burned a bridge, apparently. He, I made a I made a joke about being Eli on the tractor, and and uh, he just replied, "Where's that app, Marks?" <laughs> oh, was this on social? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Think, I don't think I yeah. saw this. Okay. So, well, all right. Maybe he's mad at me. Yeah, it probably yeah, is. You did it. Uh, That's fine. All right. Uh, we're gonna cut it short a little bit today because I love gotta it. go. I gotta catch a flight. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I gotta catch a does. flight. <laughs> Thanks to the folks at Get and Athena. Two-stroke CDIs, four-stroke ECUs. 
Email us using the contact form at Pulp to get you a discount from Get and Athena. 100% Decal Works, Vertex Pistons, Maxis, Plum Creek Funding, Seat Concept, Zools, and of course Fly Racing. Thanks to JT and Zacco. Marks, good job. Thank you. Tits, great job. Yeah, man. All right, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>